Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future Technologies, poised to transform our lives for better or worse, are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Everyone and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host Juliet Lamar, and joining us today is Philippe Castro. He is the founder and CIO at Utrust. Welcome, Philippe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course, um, Philippe. Why don't you go ahead and tell our customers or our listeners a little bit about Utrust? Absolutely. So at Utrust, uh, what we are building is a crypto to cash payment platform that allows e-commerce merchants to start accepting cryptocurrencies, multiple cryptocurrencies uh, from their customers, while providing uh, to merchants in directly into their bank account so that they are not exposed to market volatility in cryptocurrencies. This way, they can reach a whole new audience in terms of people that hold crypto assets and want to use those crypto assets to pay for goods and services, but don't want to be exposed to any kind of risk uh, as they currently are in other uh, solutions of this kind. So that's our main, our main focus. And, and you mentioned, you know, this, there's other, other applications that are trying to do a similar, a similar thing. What really sets you trust apart from your competitors? I would say that two, two main things, uh, well, actually three main things, but the two main ones, uh, are the consumer protection. So we have a very ro- robust consumer protection mechanism that protects consumers when they pay online with cryptocurrency, which works very similar to PayPal uh, for online transactions. So I'd say that's one of the major uh, differentiating factors from other uh, competing solutions. The second one is that we accept multiple cryptocurrencies when we start operating. So that means you can select as a consumer you're not restricted to only one cryptocurrency, not only paying with Bitcoin or Ethereum, but you can hold, select a whole range of cryptocurrencies to pay. Our vision is for the market to decide which cryptocurrency or cryptocurrencies will be the de facto used for payments. As you know, cryptocurrencies have different, you know, different uses. Some of them are more optimized to be means of payment. Others are more security type. So we believe that a healthy market will decide that component. The third one, uh, I might add, is that we are a tokenized company. So we were leveraged uh, not by a traditional round of venture capital, but through an ICO. Uh, that means we also have a token uh, in the market, which is also accepted in the platform. So if you use the token to buy in the platform itself, uh, you would bypass the 1% fees. So you don't pay any fees for the for the transaction itself versus other cryptocurrencies. So those are the three main factors, I would say. A very very strong things that that need to work properly in order for this all to work in in unison with with your merchants. Um, what kind of merchants do you have that are that are interacting with your platform and and how many? Yeah. So uh, we uh, we are a very young company actually. Uh, we have around nine months old. Uh, when we launched, uh, we started working right right on on our MVP, and we actually are not yet live uh, with li- uh, running with live transactions. Why is that? Uh, this is because we will need regulatory approval to to proceed with that. From the technology standpoint, everything is ready to go. Uh, we have the not the MVP, but actually the the product uh, already running uh, with mock transactions. But we only can operate live in the European space uh, by the end of this year. That means Q4 2018. In terms of merchants, uh, right now we have two big partnerships already closed. Uh, they're in the traditional payments uh, and e-commerce space. Uh, to give an idea, one of them is one of the largest German companies in, in payments. Uh, they're a listed company in the stock market. They own 35% of the POS market, and they have 30 to 40 million customers, which will be our customers uh, day one when we launch by the end of the year. In terms of merchants, uh, we have also a very strong partnership with the e-commerce merchant, uh, Gambio.de. They're one of the largest e-commerce players by revenue uh, in the European Union, and they hold around 14,000 uh, brands uh, of e-commerce that 
you know, are then going to use our technology for crypto payments exclusively for the next two years. So those are our first uh, customers slash partners that we will have when we start operating live by the end of the year. How exciting. This is such a great time when in a company's uh, growth is just right at the beginning when everything's just about to happen. Um, I'm really yeah. interested. I'm really interested in your, you know, your buyer protection and and the chargebacks, uh, your solutions mm-hmm. to those two problems. Yeah. So one of the big problems that currently happens with merchants, uh, the chargeback uh, problem that many merchants complain. Uh, you know, they, why do I keep using those systems? And uh, every time, every time that we go for interviews with them, they're like, okay, you know, I, I work with the this and that credit card company for quite a while, and they all hate chargebacks, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we provide uh, is the same type of consumer protection that PayPal does. So that, that means we act as, as a trusted mediator. So that means if something goes wrong uh, in the transaction between the buyer and the seller, you have an appeal, which is something that right now you really don't have in cryptocurrencies. You know, as we as consumers are quite used to, you know, very modern, robust, payment system in the online landscape, but in the crypto payment landscape, the state of the art is actually sending, you know, funds and your funds from your crypto wallet to another address that you might get like on an email, on a static page, and just wait for the best. That's that's the current, unfortunately, that's the current state of the art of crypto payments uh, in online e-commerce. And that's, that's simply, we can do better than that. So what we did is we actually adopted the same model as PayPal. We actually like to compare ourselves to PayPal because it's uh, our business model is quite similar. Uh, Our consumer protection model and our mediation mechanism is quite similar to PayPal, although with the possibility of uh, having a more decentralized mediation approach, uh, not solely focusing on manual approvals by by having always a person, uh, a human in, in the middle. And what we allow is if something goes wrong, you know, and you provide the evidence and the media decides, you can have your money back, which is something unprecedented for crypto payments. I know it sounds crazy, but that's 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 really how what we bring to the market for for e-commerce. So that is that is fantastic. And with with that solution comes so much more confidence for for both, you know, customers and for merchants. Yeah. So right now, it's uh, I mean, it's a it's a really good value proposition for consumers. So for consumers right now, uh, our our target use group is people already own crypto assets and they already use part of those crypto assets to pay for goods and services on the market. Most people think that, you know, crypto assets are just for speculation, for investment. And, you know, that was true for a while, but more and more, we see more business to business use cases and a lot of value being transacted in, you know, as a means of payment. And we believe that's going to drive the next stage of growth for cryptocurrencies. And, you know, it's our most direct competitor. They're doing one billion revenue and they only have four years old. So I would say that. It's it's a marking up for the taking, and we are absolutely taking part of it. And your fees, you you briefly touched on one percent, and your fees are extremely low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we leverage blockchain technology and the ability uh, that this brings to minimize fees for e-commerce and for us as well, because we can minimize operational costs on our end. We don't have a lot of infrastructure you know, expensive servers, of course, we still have development, we still have uh, marketing, we still have, you know, the cost associated with the, co- the company. But in terms of scalability, this allows us to run in a much more lean way uh, because of the, you know, underlying blockchain technology that powers our, you know, the whole system. And I think that's one of the key advantages of and, and really one of the breakthroughs and disruptions in this in this technology in blockchain and cryptocurrencies, because they allow for really, really frictional transactions at the very low cost uh, between parties, be it companies or individuals. And we are definitely taking a part of that. Uh, and that's how we can, from an operational point of view, uh, run and actually make a profit uh, on such a low margin. Of course, we are not uh, interfacing with credit card companies. So, I mean, we provide to the merchants in their bank account by converting the crypto assets just in time and delivering their bank account. Uh, 
but we only take 1%, which we think is a very fair fee. Uh, we, you know, when we talk to e-commerce merchants, they always think like, oh my God, I, I want that tomorrow. Sure, I'm not going to change overnight, but I want to tackle that new market and to run that crypto payment solution in parallel to my traditional solutions and see, you know, what brings me more revenue in, in, in the coming years, because they would obviously prefer uh, the solution that decreases their operational costs. They don't have to pay annual fees to us. Uh, we only take 1% of whatever volume goes through. And competing solutions uh, in the traditional payments can take up to 3.5% plus conversion fees. So imagine if you take a lot of international customers in different currencies, it's, well, you're losing a lot of money and your customers are losing a lot of money. And that's not bad for business. Definitely. So walk us through a little bit about the user interface, you know, and if you're going to start using this, uh, this application, you know, how yeah. are people going to interact with it and what does it look like? Yeah. So uh, I think everyone knows the pay with PayPal button in websites, right? Uh, everything in the audience should be familiar. So imagine the same thing in your favorite website uh, when you go to buy something, but instead of pay with PayPal, it will be a button below saying pay with you trust. When you click the button, pay with you trust, uh, it shows a different selection of cryptocurrencies that you can use to pay on that merchant. Uh, you can select your favorite cryptocurrencies and you can use your own app, your own wallet, uh, to actually pay, uh, or you can use our own wallet, or an app wallet. The process of payment is extremely seamless and simple. Uh, a QR code will show, and you just have to scan the QR code to proceed. So if you ever uh, use solutions in Asia, such as you know WeChat Pay, Alipay, that offer a very seamless payment experience, both online and offline, it's that same seamless model we are trying to capture. So there's no, you know, typing your car details, uh, like anything like that. It's not complicated. It's very simple. Just select the type of cryptocurrency. A QR code will show, and you can use the funds in your own wallet, on your private keys, in your own wallet, or you can use our own wallet, uh, the Utrust wallet, which will be an app that you can download in App Store and uh, Google Play Store. Uh, if you choose to use our own wallet, uh, of course, uh, you can benefit from instant transaction confirmation. So that means whatever cryptocurrency you pay in, uh, the transaction confirmation will be instant uh, to that merchant, which is uh, kind of a neat advantage. In terms of uh, user experience, this is really what we're aiming for. It's a seamless payment experience on websites you already use, uh, but with cryptocurrency and with just a few clicks. That's fantastic. And and so... So easy. I mean, this really is the future. Right? What keeps you motivated with with working in the payment space? And how did you find yourself working in the payment space? Oh, that's that's quite a story. So uh, I I used I, I used to work as a as a developer initially. So my my first master is computer science. Uh, I used to be a developer uh, many years ago. Uh, well, I was working in IT. I also work in payment solutions, more traditional payment gateways. Uh, eventually, I, you know, I went to different countries to work in some cool new startups, exited. Uh, I went for my MBA. Uh, and after that, I actually got engaged to, you know, to work in venture capital uh, in the fundraising and due diligence process. I'm always really passionate about startups and, you know, working in this awesome, fast-paced environment. And recently, actually, in last year, I went to uh, a blockchain conference. You know, blockchain and cryptocurrencies were all like the new rage and like, well, what's going on? What's What innovation will this bring? What markets will it disrupt? And I was really captivated by uh, one of the presentations. And that's where I met my one of my co-founders, Nuno. Uh, he, was a, he was a seasoned crypto investor since 2009. And we actually, on the same day, uh, we went for a beer and we decided to start working together on a crypto payment solution, combining both of our expertise. And the next day, we we're drafting our first keynote and we were pitching to investors, believe it or not. Uh, we got actually an angel investor that wanted to invest uh, in us after two weeks. And he wanted to give us $3 million for 40% of a company. 
we refused and we decided to do a ITO or initial coin offering instead. And we raised 21 million in November to build it. Wow. So that's, that's a, I, a I know it's story. a very, yeah, it's a very abridged story. It's been nonstop, you know, we've been growing, hiring more people. Uh, now, of course, it's the whole set of different challenges transforming into a revenue oriented cash flow positive business, uh, regulatory challenges. You know, it's a whole new, whole new world, and you have competition as well. So you have to keep on your toes. Uh, we will be going to the U.S. market in the future as well. Uh, again, this is a business that obviously requires regulatory approval. It requires license. Those can be quite expensive or require a lot of legal work. So initially, uh, our release by Q4, as I, as I mentioned, is going to be in Europe, in European space. Uh, that's that's our first entry market. But of course, uh, we also want to join in and uh, expand to other markets as we clear all the regulatory hurdles. And, you know, as cryptocurrencies as, are more and more seen as a legitimate uh, means of payment and not something, you know, shady or that it's not really appealing to the to the mass market. And what what are some of the biggest things that you have you have learned by working in this industry? Huh. Well, I, I, you know, it's, it's been kind of a, a roller coaster. I, I learned that more cryptocurrencies exist than I thought it was possible. And <laughs> I learned a lot about, you know, raising capital and, you know, building a team from the ground up. How, how, how do you do that in sh- such a short amount of time? How do you go from like an idea to having funds in a couple of weeks to, you know, now you have 14,000 investors uh, slash, you know, future customers that are keenly invested on your product. And, you know, you have to manage expectations while building your product, while building your brand, while hiring. So being entrepreneur, what I learned, it's like, it's honestly the most, difficult job in the world so for everyone out there like if you're thinking of becoming an entrepreneur and you know that that's the with the goal of like becoming rich overnight and you know you're gonna have you're gonna sell your startup and you're gonna be rich no that does not happen it's unfortunately it's a lot of hard work uh you know sleepless nights uh, but you'll be working with amazing people you'll be the owner of your own destiny and you'll be one the one calling the shots, but it's not for everyone. And that I can fully understand. It's really, it's very stressful and it will consume your life and become your passion at the same time. That's, that's so wonderful. Um, so Philippe, let us know what is the best way for people to, to get involved with you trust um, when it comes out. And if people want to get involved with uh, the ICO, the tokenization, what are the best ways to connect? Yeah. Absolutely. So let me start with the tokenization. The token, the the token sale ended last year, so that's already already done. Of course, the token, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the ticker is UTK, and it's on the market. It's freely available to in the secondary markets, so everyone can you know buy and sell freely on the secondary markets. The platform itself uh, will be operational on Q4, and if you hold crypto assets and you ever wondered if there was a better way to spend those crypto assets. In goods and services, because chances are, if you are, if you're listening and you are a holder of cryptocurrencies, you most certainly use the fraction of those cryptocurrencies to buy stuff. But I know how you did it before. Like, involves a lot of back and forth. You have to transfer your funds to an exchange wallet, then transfer from an exchange wallet. You know, in paying fees, you transfer from an exchange wallet to another uh, wallet or to your bank account. You pay more fees. You have to wait a few days. Uh, then you're going to use your credit card to actually purchase the goods and services and you're paying fees again. So that's a whole, like a whole range of fees that you are paying and you, there should be a better way, more seamless to actually do all of that directly with the cryptocurrency that you're going to spend anyway. And that's what we are going for in terms of customers are those people who are already doing this but you know are doing it in a way that's inefficient uh, and it's costing them a lot and we want to improve their experience and lower their cost that's for customers for merchants uh, which are also our customers uh, after all the API we provide 
uh, has to be integrated by e-commerce merchants. What we provide to you as an e-commerce merchant is a way to accept a whole new range of customers out there uh, who want and are eager to pay with cryptocurrency. So that brings to your business much more revenue. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, that this whole market is around 300 billion. Uh, I know it's very, very small still comparing to other uh, financial peaks or financial assets, but it's uh, it's growing quite a lot. And again, it's a, a growing opportunity to differentiate yourself, to you know compete with the big players, uh, in in a way that brings a lot of marketing to yourself, to your goods, and can be really part of your internalization strategy, inter internationalization strategy. Sorry. So I would say um, that, of, and of course, uh, by uh, go ahead. by providing a by providing an API that lowers your operational costs has absolutely no risk. That means you, as e-commerce merchant, you can integrate the platform. It supports standard plugins, and you can see if it brings any revenue or not. So it's zero risk, and you have everything to benefit as an e-commerce merchant. And we take care of the hard part, which is the volatility, the risk, and the settlement in your bank account. Such a great, such a great platform. And and the best way for people to learn more about Utrust is uh, your website. Is that a good oh sorry oh sorry, <laughs> absolutely. So if you guys want to know more about Utrust, you can just visit utrust.com. Uh, we are also hiring. Uh, so if you're a developer uh, working on something, you want to join a cool startup in the payments industry, you can check us out. Uh, the page for onboarding businesses and e-commerce is also located in our website. You can check out information about our token. You can actually try our demo store at utrust.com to see the whole flow of payment. You actually purchase some of our goods uh, in the demo store uh, right now with cryptocurrency. So that really showcases the Utrust experience that you will see in e-commerce merchants by the end of the year. So if you want to try it out, go and visit us at utrust.com. Wonderful. Well, Philippe, thank you so much for coming on our program and, and really highlighting what Utrust is doing and all the amazing changes it's going to be bringing to our online payments world. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Bye-bye, guys. See you soon. That See you soon. That was Philippe Castro. He is the founder and CIO at Utrust. That is utrust.com. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been Juliette Lamar with Future Tech Podcast. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, both to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. 